as Eric Zensi pointed out a few minutes ago, the corporate political candidate almost always wins in our system. But when they win, what do they get? Well, one thing they get is subsidies from the government funded by taxpayers like you and me. Basically, the people who already have plenty of money and are able to buy elections then turn around and sneak more of our money into their pockets. Subsidies are payouts of taxpayer money to businesses or individuals so that they can produce something. Most of the time, this money goes to very big individuals, such as corporations. Now, not all subsidies are bad. The intention behind subsidies is good. The market sometimes fails to produce enough of the things society really needs. For example, maybe a girl named Lucy really wants to paint a beautiful mural of diamonds floating around in the sky on the side of a city building. Everybody in the city would love it. It has value to everyone, and they would even be willing to pay a little money for it, say, a quarter each. But there is no mechanism in place to capture that money and pay Lucy to paint. So, Lucy doesn't paint the mural. A subsidy can attempt to pay Lucy to paint so that everyone can benefit from seeing her paintings. We like to do this for things like solar panels, wind turbines, cancer research, libraries, and college loans. The goal is that society as a whole makes an investment through their tax money and what they get in return is something worth more than what they put in. There is supposed to be a net increase in value for everyone, or at the very least, no loss in value. But we also have these things called perverse subsidies. Yuck. Not only do they sound bad, but they sound creepy. They work the same way, but with very different results. Everyone pays, but few people get the benefits. They are often bad environmentally and economically. Examples include corporate welfare subsidies, inefficient agricultural supports like corn ethanol and sugar, and subsidies for fossil fuel energy production like coal, tar sands, and everybody's personal favorite, deep water oil drilling, <coughs> BP. Let's see who pays and who benefits in the sugar industry, for example. For every dollar the sugar industry pays in toward campaign contributions to both Democrats and Republicans, they get back $900 per year in fixed prices and forgiven loans. We pay $2.1 billion per year in higher prices and higher taxes, and what we get in return is a bill of $200 million per year to clean up and restore the Everglades, where the largest concentration of U.S. sugar production is. The World Wildlife Fund says sugar production results in more biodiversity loss than any other crop due to destruction of habitat to make way for plantations, intensive use of water for irrigation, heavy use of chemicals, and polluted wastewater. Tens of thousands of acres in the Everglades have been destroyed by agriculture. So, which of us out of the 99% benefit? Some small sugar growers get a little money, but the lion's share, 60% of the benefits, go to the 1% of the biggest sugar producers. Does this sound familiar? So basically, we all pay more so that the 1% of the wealthiest sugar companies can reap the benefits. I have one final example. Subsidies for the market access program in the Overseas Private Investment Corporation help companies like McDonald's, Nabisco, and Fruit of the Loon market their products around the world. So, those in power are spending our money to help large corporations with already deep pockets market their products around the world rather than help old people afford critical medicine or help college students pay for their education. Meanwhile, societies around the world have to absorb the enormous waste produced by Happy Meal toys, Big Mac wrappers, and Chicken McNugget containers, not to mention the environmental and social impact of sweatshop factories. In a bipartisan report released by the National Taxpayers Union and PERG, it is estimated that we could save $62 billion over the next five years by cutting perverse subsidies. 
the media tells us that despite the criticism against subsidies, they keep people employed. I'm not saying that we should cut subsidies at the cost of American jobs. Let's keep subsidies in place where they are effective and where the money trickles down equitably to all the producers, not just the biggest ones. And where the money spent by society benefits all of society. But where the money is being spent perversely, concentrating in the hands of the few at the cost of our natural environment and our society as a whole, let's take back that money. Let's spend it by creating more jobs for more people without hurting the environment and our communities. For example, we could use that $62 billion from perverse subsidies to pay nearly a quarter million teachers at $50,000 apiece for the next five years. This is your money, this is your country, you decide. 